Welcome to Fireside Chat. My name is Sai. We are now in the final month of 2021. I'm sure many of you guys and gals start thinking about what you want to improve in 2022 by creating your New Year's resolutions. And I know, I know, people will say New Year, New Me in January, and then they pretty much give up in February. Well, I think what people need is a financial goal that is specific, measurable, and achievable. It's like having a fitness plan and it's probably not measurable to lose 20 pounds in three days, right? So for the entire month of December, I'm going to publish videos that can help you start it on your New Year's resolution to start saving and investing your money. The first part of this video series is building your emergency fund because according to CNBC, over half of Americans have less than three months worth of emergency savings. So in this video, I'm going to break down how much money you should save in your emergency fund including deductibles for your insurances and where you should park this money so you never touch it unless you absolutely have to. I know you always hear people say you should save three to six months of your expenses. What people don't really think about is the other emergency expenses that they should consider for the emergency fund. I want you to think about some additional scenarios by asking yourself these questions. How much would it cost you to fly home in case of a family emergency? How much would you need to pay out of your own pocket for the insurance deductible after you get into a car accident? How much money would you need to set aside for a medical emergency? If you lose your job tomorrow, how much money do you need set aside each month to keep a roof over your head? If you're in a dual income family and one of you loses your job tomorrow, could you live on one person's income until you find a new job? Now let's talk about the differences between a rainy day fund and an emergency fund. A rainy day fund is when you need the cash right away to, uh, let's say you have a blown tire and you need $200 to buy a new tire. An emergency fund is used to cover your living expenses while you're looking for a new source of income. So let's go back to the questions I asked earlier. How much would it cost you to fly home in case of a family emergency? I live in Las Vegas. My family lives in the San Francisco Bay Area. So if I had to fly home tomorrow for a family emergency, I know it would cost me X amount of dollars for flights, X amount of dollars for a rental car, and X amount of dollars for a hotel. I know this is not a comfortable subject for many people, but if you know someone close in your family who might pass away soon, you should have a conversation with your family members about the possible funeral costs and other expenses. The next question is how much would I need to pay out of pocket to pay for the insurance deductible after I get into a car accident? Most people might have to pay anywhere between $250 to $1,000 for each incident. You should log into your car insurance account and find out what your deductible is. My deductible is $500 so I set that in my rainy day fund. I have rental reimbursement with Progressive up to $40 each day for 30 days. You should look at your car insurance coverage to see if you have the rental coverage. If you don't, then you should mentally be prepared for the rental car cost and set some money aside for it. And the next question is how much money would you need to set aside for a medical emergency? And this is a tough one because you never know how severe or how unexpected your medical emergency can be. If you have a severe illness that could keep you hospitalized for weeks, you could be paying a lot of your, out of your pocket for the medical bill and you could lose your income for not being able to work. It usually takes the hospital a few weeks to a month to bill you the medical bills so you would have some time to be prepared for the, uh, for the uh, out of pocket cost. However, losing a couple weeks of income can be devastating because you still have some bills to pay. This is where your emergency fund comes in. So this answer ties in with the next question, which is if you lose your job tomorrow, how much money do you need set aside each month to keep a roof over your head? By the way, if you need help with your personal finances, you can schedule a free one-on-one 20 minute financial coaching session by visiting firesidechat.com coaching. In one of my previous videos, I talked about calculating your fire numbers so you know how much money you need saved and invested to retire early. In that video, I broke down my expenses to five separate categories and they're sorted by priorities. I applied the same concept uh, to calculating my emergency expenses. Priority number one is housing. This is where I calculate how much money I absolutely need to keep a roof over our heads. You should put mortgage or rent in this category as well as your property tax, homeowners insurance, and the HOA fees. If we stop paying for any of these expenses, 
there's a good chance that we could lose our home. Priority number two is your utilities. These are the expenses you need to keep your house running. Whether you rent or own your home, you need to pay your electricity bills to keep the lights on, pay your water bill to wash your hands, shower or flush the toilet, and gas bill to keep the heat on. I will put your cell phone in this category as well. Priority number three is transportation. No matter where you live, you need transportation to get from point A to point B. If you lose your job and you should still set enough money aside to pay for gas, car insurance, and any upcoming vehicle maintenance. If you're still financing your car, then you need to include your car payment in the emergency fund. I always encourage people to pay off the car as soon as possible because it is considered a bad debt. Priority number four is your food. And this is where you calculate how much money you and your family need to spend each month on groceries. Do not include your dining out in this category. And the last priority is your medical, dental, and life insurance monthly payments. These are the expenses you want to keep paying in case of any additional emergencies that could happen while you're dealing with one. Now, I know, life can be such a sometimes. So the last question was, if you're a dual income family and one of you loses your job tomorrow, could you live on one person's income until you find a new job? Let's say you make $4,000 a month and your spouse makes $3,000 a month. Your total expenses from categories one through five are a total at, um, let's say $3,500, and that's your housing, utilities, transportation, groceries, and insurances. If your spouse loses his or her job, then your $4,000 income would still cover the monthly expenses. If you lose your job, then your spouse's income is short $500 on paying for your essential expenses. You would just withdraw $500 each month from your emergency fund to help cover your expenses. So where should you park your emergency savings? By the way, if you enjoyed this content so far, hit subscribe and next week's video is going to be about how to pay off your debt quickly in the year 2022. Couple things you need to consider is you need to make sure your emergency fund is liquid. So what that means is you can access the cash whenever you can. The second key factor is you need to make sure this is a low risk account and not in an investment account. I know people argue that cash is trash and how it gets devalued over time because of inflation, but the purpose of having an emergency fund is to give you that peace of mind when something unexpected happens to you. Having cash set aside for any emergency situations will keep you from keeping a balance on your credit card, taking out a high interest personal loan, borrow from your retirement fund or sell your stocks. The rule of thumb I teach people is that if you're a dual income family, you should save at least three months of your expenses. If you're the only source of income, then you should save at least six months of your expenses. So for example, your monthly expenses from the five categories are totaled at $3,000 a month, then your three months of expenses would be $9,000 and six months would be $18,000. At the end of every year, you should recalculate your expenses so you can increase or decrease your emergency fund for the following year. Other things to consider when you're just now starting to build your emergency fund is dividing your rainy day fund and your emergency fund. Again, your rainy day fund is something you need immediately like paying a deductible for your car insurance, a new tire, or traveling for a family emergency. Typically, you want to set aside about $1,000 for your rainy day fund. An emergency fund is used to pay for your essential expenses while you're looking for a new source of income. Once you have fully funded your emergency fund, then you should combine both your rainy day fund and your emergency fund together into one. So $1,000 is a good goal to set to get started on your emergency fund. So the last question is, where should you park your emergency fund? And I've had my emergency fund parked with Ally Bank High Yield Savings Account for several years. When I first opened an account with them, they were paying me at least 2% in APY. Now it's at about 0.5% because the Fed's lowered the interest rate. It's really hard right now to find a savings account that can beat the inflation rate. You might have to deposit more money at the end of each year to account for the inflation. You should also consider a money market account because they also pay a higher APY than traditional bank accounts. Certificates of deposit or CDs are another possibility for your emergency fund. CDs usually pay you a higher interest rate than other bank accounts, but they do require you to keep your money in the account for a specific period of time. The only problem with that is if you have an emergency before your CD has fully matured, then you could end up paying an early withdrawal penalty. So bottom line is, if you haven't started building your emergency fund, then you should start now. 
I think we all learned from 2020 that nothing is guaranteed. If you're looking to make a career change or you're in a specific niche, or you're in the military looking to move every three years or four years, you should have enough money saved to cover your expenses. So ultimately having an emergency fund can stop you from dipping into your savings or creating a balance on your credit cards when unexpected expenses come up. I want you to stop moving backwards and start moving forward with your savings goals. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to check out these two fire videos and my Instagram page. I will post a new fire video every Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more fire videos.